Is Corey Littleton's time with the Raiders coming to an end? As you can see on this depth chart, Corey Littleton has always been at the weak linebacker position, and behind him has been rookie Divine Diablo, third round pick. Lately, you've seen a huge decline in Corey Littleton's snap count. I mean, it's not just this past game against Cleveland where he only had five total snaps. Five total snaps. And then before that, he had 19 snaps in Kansas City, 23 snaps against the Washington football team. And then he had his normal amount, like 50 to 60 snaps, all the way prior to week 12. So you see week one, 57. And since week 13, it has dropped dramatically. Washington football team was the first time, 23 snaps, 19 Kansas City, 5 Cleveland. And you got to think, man... Maybe maybe the, maybe it is over because guess what? Corey Littleton hasn't really done what we expected to happen for the Las Vegas Raiders. 2019, we had some problems at linebacker. We had Vontez Perfect, and then he got banned from the NFL. You know how that went. Shout out to Perfect, though. I love Perfect. Once a Raider, always a Raider. And you know what? Maybe free Perfect. I've seen a lot of people do way dirtier plays than Perfect, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Free Perfect. But check out Corey Littleton's PFF grades. I know it's not everything, but 2020, 47 overall grade. 2021, 47 overall grade. And not doing well in coverage, and that was supposed to be a strength of his. So we were looking for an answer at middle linebacker who signed Corey Littleton, give him the bag in 2020. And now you see what's happening already. Divine Diablo, his snaps have increased since week 13. Now in week 10 for Divine Diablo against Kansas City, you can see he only had five snaps. Then boom, week 13, same time that Littleton snaps goes, goes down, 30 eight snaps for divine then 52 against kansas city and then 34 in this past cleveland game and by the way he did get banged up in this cleveland game so he would have had even more and so you have to wonder are the raiders going to move on from Corey littleton can they move on from Corey littleton we know there's been contract restructures that have happened since he's been with the raiders in 2020 you see right here he has some voided years in the future. In 2022, his cap number is actually going to be $15.7 million. This is according to OverTheCap.com, and he would have $14 million in dead money if he was cut before June. If he was traded before June, he would also still have $14 million in dead money. So the reason why I made this video is because this is concerning if you're a Raiders fan, and this is concerning if you're somebody who cares about the future of the Raiders. Corey Littleton is on the books for a lot of money, a lot of dead money, and he's not starting. He is being benched by a rookie, and we've seen Corey Littleton have high highs in his career, so you wonder, is it is it the scheme? Is it the organization? Now, they've tried to convert as much cash as they can. Either way, as it stands today, if Corey Littleton was cut in 2023, Raiders would still owe him $9.9 .9 million in dead money. That's huge. That's the contract of somebody like Unique Ngakwe. That's the contract of somebody like Kenyon Drake, who is a high-paid free agent for us. Now, there is a silver lining. If Corey Littleton was cut after June in 2022 or 2023, there would only be a $4 million dead money hit. And that also is true with regards to a trade. So the best option right now, if the Raiders aren't going to play Corey Littleton at all, and, it, and we're starting the Divine Diablo hype train, especially since Divine Diablo has looked good. Look, look at his PFF grade in these past two games, Kansas City and Cleveland, 78.1 Cleveland and 65.7 against Kansas City, really good against the run too. And so if we are really moving on, the Raiders have to think now and they got to think fast and it's going to be a little tricky because are you going to go to OT? if you're Corey Littleton, if you have a rocky relationship, if you're not starting, right? What's going to happen over the summer? Post-June is going to be huge. So basically, they're going to have to trade him or cut him after June if, if they want to save some money. And you're not going to pay $15 million in cap for backup. So this is interesting. This is another bad decision, you would say, by the GM, by Gruden at the time, if he was involved in this decision to bring Corey Littleton. Although we do know Corey Littleton was geared towards Paul Gunther's system. Paul Gunther was probably the person who pounded the table for him. And then you've seen us hire Gus Bradley. It's a different scheme. So maybe it's just bad timing. But either way, the Raiders should... Uh do right by Corey Littleton and, and, and let him let him go to a different team in this in this offseason if he's not part of their future plans. And I think they will do so. So this is Wi-Fi Willie. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just wanted to keep you guys up to date with this because I see this lurking in the background. And I think, it, I mean, I'm pretty positive it's going to happen. The numbers are there. You can't pay $15 million to a guy who's not your starter. That's a huge cap hit. He'd be making more than Ngakwe at that point. 
And I wish this would have worked out, but unfortunately it didn't. However, I hope you guys liked this video. Like this video if you watched it all the way through. And remember to subscribe to my channel, man. I got new content for the Raiders coming out every single week. And I talk about the whole entire NFL. I'm always criticizing the NFL and all the BS they do. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace out, everybody.